Hello, welcome to your second advanced scripting tutorials for Roblox Lua. Okay, so this is the advanced section now, so we're just going to be learning more, obviously, advanced stuff. Make sure you've um, make sure you've been through the beginners series before even continuing in this advanced series, because everything that I've taught in the beginners tutorial series, I'm not going to be uh, like going over things in this series so you need to make sure you've watched the big beginners one before you even start the advanced one okay so if you want to find the beginners tutorial series then just try go to my channel and uh, go to the home page of my channel and somewhere on there you should find the beginner series basically it's the same sort of videos like this except it's got a um, it's got a green green background for the thumbnail as you can see these these advanced tutorials they've got a red um, background for the thumbnail picture okay so let's get started then last tutorial I taught you I think it was tables wasn't it yeah tables so let's go ahead and uh, try to create a table I'm just gonna zoom in okay so let's create a table uh, we're gonna call it our table called pod equals our table okay so again in the advanced series I'm not going to be like recovering everything everything that I've learned in the previous tutorial I'm not going to be covering it again in detail like like I did in the beginners tutorial this is this is for advanced people you need to be really focused and advanced to even carry on in these tutorials okay so we've learned that uh, we can store anything in anything in these tables so numbers uh, text um, maybe a boolean actually I'm not even sure if you can store boolean I haven't even tried it with booleans yet let me just uh, Let's try and print pod. Uh, it's the fourth one, isn't it? Yeah, fourth one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm gonna try and print this boolean value. Uh, yeah, you can stop booleans. It's pretty obvious. Okay, so not only just booleans, you can even store things like parts. So let's go ahead and store game dot workspace dot uh, base uh, base plate. Actually, no, I've got a better idea. I'm going to insert a part. Let's call it pish pod. And um, let's go to the script. Let's put the script inside pish pod. And uh, I'm going to store in this table script.parent. And uh, let's try and print pod5.name. Now this is this is a good practice as well. Store a part inside the uh, table and you can go ahead and print the part's name. Okay, so that's pretty good if you do that. So go ahead and click play. It's printed the name of the part, which is pishpod. If we um, didn't have the dot name on the end, then now have a look what it's going to print. Oh, it's printed pishpod again. Hold on, let me just try it a different thing get full name okay this is an inbuilt inbuilt function that you can use on parts and it basically gives you the full directory of the part and uh, what this should print out is it should print out game.workspace.pishpod okay it gives you the full directory you see workspace.pishpod now also when you're working with the scripts I, I think you can you don't have to put the game.workspace on the end you can you can just put workspace but I just like doing game.workspace because it's better so as you can see it's giving me the full directory of where pishpod the part is and it's in the workspace if it was in inside a model it would have said game oh, it would have said workspace dot model name dot pishpod okay so you kind of have a sense of how that work works now so this kind of has nothing to do with what I'm meant to be teaching in this tutorial I just thought I'd give you a what it actually does so now let's have a look at what we're actually meant to be learning in this tutorial, which is another type of loop. It's it's a special type of loop which is designed to loop around tables and arrays. Well, arrays are the same thing as tables. They're pretty much the same thing, arrays and tables. We just call it tables in Lua. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, make some sort of table, and I'm going to call it my table. Okay, and let's give it some values. Uh, Nine two uh, high. Uh, true and script okay so dot parent dot name okay so this is another text value uh, remember with string values you've got to put it in quotation marks or speech marks same thing um, 
This is also a string, but it's not in quotation marks. It's just like that. That's because the name of this part is already a string. Therefore, we don't need to go. Ahead. We don't need to put um, this inside quotation marks because the actual name is already a string. This would be storing the string of script.parent.name. That would have no meaning to it. It wouldn't go and get the name of the parent. It would just be t normal text like this. Okay, so we take the quotation marks away, and this would be the actual name of the uh, part, which is the parent of the script, which is pishpod. So, uh, enough of me talking, let's go ahead and try it. For iv in pairs, my table. Oh, look at that. It's um, something you probably don't know how it works. So it's got the word for in it, okay, we recognize that. We recognize the word i, or the variable i, okay, so far so good. Uh, the comma, yep, the comma normally comes off to the um, i. Actually, no, it's normally an equals, isn't it, in normal for loops? It goes for i equals 1, comma, and then to whatever value you want to count to. But with this loop, it's quite different. You've got the comma, but then you've got v. Uh, then you've got in pairs my table what is this all about so I'm gonna talk you through what this is about so you've got the four which means we already know how many times we're going to be looping round uh, then we've got the I which is the index which is just this increases by one for every loop okay so every time it goes round it the value of I increases by one and then we've got V which is the whole part. You don't know what V is, but I do. So I'm going to teach you what V is. V is just the item in the table. So each time we loop round, V will be this one here. And then next time we loop round, V will be this one here. And then next time we loop round, V will be this one, which is high. So it just increases the value in the table. And that's just all it does. And then in pairs, which is just a normal syntax really, if you're looping a table, just put in pairs. Uh, and then you've got print my table. So this is the actual table that we're going to be looping round. Uh, you need to give it a table to loop round, otherwise it doesn't know what table we're going to loop round. Okay, so then you've got the do to show it's a loop. And then everything inside, do and end, you put the code. So if I were to head, go ahead and say print v. Now, what I just told you a few seconds ago, V, every time it loops round, V is each one of these, okay? So V would be 9 the first loop, second loop V would be 2, second loop, I mean third loop V would be high, and then so on. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, try it out. Uh, press play. See that? It prints 9, 2, high, true, pishpod. So and that's what it does. So you can see that V goes 9, 2, high, true, pishpod. Okay? And that's what V is. V is just the the item in the table for every loop. Okay? And that, that's all it is. So what about I? So I is also... I is the number. Every time it loops around, I gets bigger by 1. So let's go ahead and try it then. Um, I'm going to do this... Uh, now these double dots, I haven't taught you it in the tutorial yet. All the double dots means is it's a string joiner, it's a connector for strings. So we write the number of the loop. So say it's the first loop, it writes one. And then we're going to join this to this string here, which is just an empty, it's a space. I'll just put a space in here. Um, I can actually do this, hold on. Uh, that. So this is connected I to this string, which is a space dash space. And then we've ended that string, and then we've, we're joining that to the table value. So what this, if, if, if it's the first loop, it would do 1, join it to a dash, and then join that to 9. Okay, so say we're in the last loop, uh, we'd do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, join that to a dash, join it to pishpod. Okay. And uh, that's all these double dots do. They join strings together. I didn't really need to do a whole tutorial on that because it's just pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and press play. Okay, so... Okay, we've got a slight error after the third value. Hold on. 
Oh, I know why that is. But for the first three values, you can see before the error came, it went one and then dash nine. You can see that in the output, two dash two, and then three dash high. And that's because we've put i here for the, the number, i is the number, then we've joined that to a string which contains a space dash space, and then we've joined that to v, which is uh, the item in the table. In, in the first case it was 9, then it was 2, then it was high. But then the fourth value in the table was a boolean value. As you can see in, this, in the error message, it says works, workspace.pishpod.script. So it gives you the directory of the script, workspace.pishpod.script. Okay, we've got the directory of the script. Uh, and then the colon 9, which gives us the line number where the error was. So there was some sort of error with printing something. And then it says the error, what the error actually is. Attempt to cons... Um, I thought that said concentrate, but it says something else. Uh, local v, a boolean value. Okay, so a boolean value. B, v was a boolean value, as we can see here. V was true, and true is not a string. Therefore, you can't you can't join a boolean value using a string joiner. Okay, so that's something you can't do. You can't just go ahead and join strings. So that's why we've got an error. Let's go ahead and take the boolean value out. Press play again. Now got no errors. So we've got 1 to 9, 2 to 2, 3 to high and 4 to pish pod. So and uh, yeah that's just that's how the string joiner works and that's how the for in pairs loops works for IV in pairs. Now again V doesn't have to be V it can be anything it can be table value okay and then in that case we'd have to change V here to table value because we're using the name table value now. It can be anything you want, but again, it's most commonly V, and that's what it's just most commonly used as. You just, you know, you've got I, then you've got V. Okay, so that's how to do it. That's the four in pairs loop. You say four, the number you want to count up in uh, each item in the table. Every loop, it just in, it just goes to a different value, and then you've got in pairs, and then you've got in brackets the table name. Okay, so the table name, which is my table and then do and you can do whatever you want inside the script so say so you could so you've got a ton of bricks you put a load of bricks inside the table you could change each transparency by whatever you want so i'm going to just um do that quickly just as a example actually no as an example i want to do this uh here's another way of outputting all the table values so for i uh for i equals one two hashtag my table uh do end okay right so what does this mean now the hashtag just it gets the number of objects inside a table if you were to go ahead and print uh hashtag my table it would print however many items there are inside the table so in this case there's three there's three values inside the table so it would print three Okay, so this is basically saying for i equals 1 to 3, do. And then we go ahead and print my table i. So it's just printing the i value of the of the table here. So that, what it's doing is, it's getting in the first loop, i would be 1. So we'd be printing my table 1, which is 9. Then we'd be printing number 2, then we'd be printing number... Oh, hi. We'll be printing the string hi. So that's another way of doing it. But if you're using tables, don't do it this way. Okay, this way that that, that is on the screen right now. Do not do it like that, unless you have a good reason to do it like that. So just do it like this in pairs. My table. It's just you know the better way of doing things using the in pairs loop. Okay, just do it like this, like I've shown you now. This one. Okay and then using printv. This is the good way. This is the good way. Right, so that's how to do that. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to show you inside the tutorial. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me just copy and paste this part. Uh, oh, that's too many. I just want maybe four. Let's call this one one, uh, two, um, Three. Uh, what should this one be called? Uh, let's call this one four. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. 
Okay. Oops, that's just I want to get that in line, but I can't. So yeah, one, two, three, and four. These are the bricks, and let's go ahead and see if we can do something to them in the script. So let's put them inside the table. Game dot workspace dot one. Uh, one, and then let's go ahead and copy that. Uh, let me zoom out quickly. Game dot workspace dot two. Game dot workspace dot three. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just putting all these objects, all these parts inside the table because I can. You can put objects inside a table as well. You can put anything inside a table. Int value, boolean value, string value, uh, and objects like these here. Okay. So, if I, V, in pairs, my table, do, well, we're not going to print anymore because we're, we're doing some advanced stuff. I don't want to be doing printing all the time now. I want to show you some actual examples of scripting. So, let's go ahead and say v.transparency equals 1 and then weight 1. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to get each part, V, and then it's going to get the transparency and set it to 1 of each part and then we're going to have one second delay between each loop okay so if I let me just anchor these things first because we don't want them just dropping out of the sky oh something went on sale okay so let's anchor them and if I click play you see that they're not disappearing they're just going transparent you see they're still there I can still click them they're just transparent so let's go ahead and set it to 0 0.5 I like 0 0.5 press play so you can see now how how to actually use these loops in games, in game scripting. Say you wanted to have a game where parts just randomly go transparent. Stick all the parts that you want to go transparent into a table and then loop through that table and change them all to be transparent. Now a thing that I don't want you to do is say you put a string value in here and it says yes or maybe an integer value but I'm just going to use a string. If you're looping through the table you'd come to the string and then you'd be trying to set the string to 0 0.5 transparency so you don't really want to do that you don't want to have you can't have a string with the transparency of 0 0.5 that would just cause an error so be careful of these sorts of things okay and I will be teaching you how to try to avoid these sorts of things in the next tutorial okay so yeah just keep practicing in pairs loops and you will be an expert soon okay just you know practice makes perfect so I will see you in the uh, next tutorial then. Bye.